Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to talk about API management and we're going to look if we can query Cosmos DB from API management directly. So in our integration platform, we're building solutions where we may have Cosmos DB here chosen as one of the storage options for data within our integration platform. So maybe we've got transactions flowing between systems we may use Cosmos as an intermediate data store, or Cosmos may be the data store for one of the applications and we're going to integrate with it. In the case of API management, so we're probably focusing on exposing an API to a number of systems where the data from that API may come from Cosmos DB. And maybe we also have integration scenarios where Logic App comes into play for getting data in and out of that Cosmos database instance. A couple of example architectures. So here's one where we've got events coming from a rail car. They come into our integration platform and then we're registering that rail car in its current status in our rail car database. And then we have these applications here who want to be able to use data. So maybe we've got a mobile app or a a web app that's integrating with API management to query the status of rail cars. Now, how, how we would quite often implement that is you may use a logic app here, which would have a connector where you can query a document out of um, Cosmos DB. So if we're using the SQL option, for example, you'd use that connector and you'd grab the rail car record and you would just return that back out of, um, out of the API. Now, the question is, um, if we build this architecture for the API, we're really building two components. So we're building the API and the logic app to be able to, to so the logic app plays the role of the back end for the API. Now, the question is, if we wanted to simplify this architecture, if API management has the option to query Cosmos DB directly, then you've just removed one component, so that's one DevOps process you've got rid of, one less component to worry about maintenance and testing and all that kind of stuff. And, and just simplification is always a good thing. Now, there's two options for being able to access Cosmos from um, API management. So option one would be HTTP. So um, Cosmos exposes an, an HTTP-based API that you can integrate with and you could just proxy that with um, API management. So that would be option one. There's also a new way that APIM supports it with a with a graph API. So if we have um, graph query language API, and there's a resolver that's been added, which is in preview, which is the thing we're going to look at today to look at how simple it would be to expose that Cosmos data. So over in um, over in the documentation here, we've got this um, Cosmos DB data source policy, which is a preview policy. So I'm actually just going to scroll right up the top here. Right, so a couple of things. And so this this is a good walkthrough of um, this policy. So number one, this policy is currently in preview and it currently isn't supported on consumption tier of APIM. So they're the two caveats to be aware of. What we, what we want to do is just have a look at what this does and what opportunities that gives us for building APIs. So if we just scroll down a little bit, you can see there's an example policy here. So we have this Cosmos DB data source. We've got this section here is where we define our connection to Cosmos. You can see you can support managed identity. And then the one we're going to look at today is this where we have a query request where we'd specify a SQL statement and that would query data from your Cosmos DB and expose it as an API. So I had a bit of a walk through of this documentation and I just want to show the, the kind of demo that I used when I was learning how to use this. So over here in Cosmos DB, I've got my, um, my demo database from a demo I did a couple of years ago. And I've got this... Um, loaded rail car collection inside a rail car database in Cosmos DB. And you can see I've got some sample records here just showing them, um, you know, showing some dummy test data. So what I can do with this is like you can see here, I've got a query that lets me filter the records by rail car ID. So it's nice and easy to query this data. 
And if I go to my API management, so here I've created a graph query database here, uh, sorry, a graph query API. And when you configure that, you would set up a schema when you would first configure it. So I've basically built this schema by hand where I've defined a type here that represents the record inside the collection. So I've only included a few properties. There's, there's many more in that test data, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. And then I've defined a type, which is the result. So if you imagine this is the, um, the wrapper where I'm going to get um, an object back, which has an items property, which is going to be an array of lo loaded rail car records. So that basically is an array of that object up here. And then I'm defining a query where I'd pass in an ID and the response would be that loaded rail car result. So you would define that, that schema now. Um, just a caveat when I set this up, um, I just put this in a file and I just imported it in when I set the API up. I think there, there are some options for being able to query metadata and stuff. I'm not sure if they're actually supported or not. Um, I couldn't get them to work, certainly, but I, I got the, you know, just to find a file and manually added it, which I think is easy enough to do. And you, you can basically just edit it if you ever change it direct here in the APIM portal. Now, the next thing that we did is um, I'll show on my next browser tab. So here um, I've got to define a resolver. In fact, we'll, we'll just go back and take a look at these resolvers. So you can see here I've created a resolver called query by ID. And if we go and have a look, this, this here links to this query by ID prop uh, operation. And you can see the type here is a query. I've chosen the by ID and I've chosen the data source as Cosmos DB. When you choose the data source, that affects the resolver policy further down. And that's where you would define how you're going to get data out of Cosmos. So if we scroll down just a little bit and have a look what we've got here. So in this policy, you can see I've defined my Cosmos collection. So here's the URL for it. Now, rather than an access key, I've set up um, I've set up a managed identity to talk to Cosmos DB here. So I've just configured that identity and I've specified the, um, the database and the container name. Then next up, I've set the SQL query. So that basically is the same query we had before, but I've got this rail car um, parameter that basically comes from the, the um the GraphQL query, so you can see here I've said I've got a parameter called rail car ID, which I'll read as an argument called ID. And then I can actually test this up here, and you can see that would show up as the ID up there. Now, before I run this, I'm going to just take a second to talk about a security thing. So when I query here, I'm using the managed identity, and what I had to do is I had to use this command um, over here. So this PowerShell command, uh, new Cosmos DB role assignment. And what I'm doing is a supply that the principal ID is the managed identity for my APIM's managed identity. I'm giving it a role for Cosmos DB. So there's a couple of um, roles you might use. I think there's a, a built-in contributor role. So if we take a second go back to the APIM policy. So there's a section right down at the bottom down here, down here where it talks about um, configuring the managed identity. So, so basically there's a script here for um, using a, a um, AZ CLI. So this is the, the role that you want to define. And the, one of the bits that I hadn't quite twigged at first is that that role is a Cosmos DB role. So you configure that role assignment inside the database as opposed to it being an Azure RBAC role, which you would configure in the Azure portal. So there's slightly different things there, so just watch out for that little gotcha. So if we go back um, back over here, so I'm just going to grab a query ID. So I can put this into my, um, my portal here, and I can run test on this. And you'll see I got, um, I got some data back here now. One of the bits that um, you've got to watch for when you get this object back, it, when we look at the test on the next screen, I um, 
I got a bit confused by this data property here. So this comes back here fine. And to me, it looks like I've got data with a child object called items. And then here's my loaded rail cars. The bit that confused me is when I look at my schema over here, I, I have the items specified, but I didn't have the data. And originally I was trying to create a second object with data. Um, a data property which had a child of items and, and that just never mapped correctly so i think what happens in the graph ql is it somehow it's like ignoring that data property and that's the root object um and, and there's a wrap around it that um apim sort of skips in the resolver so this is what i got to work i didn't need the data element i just needed items and then the data bit actually matches to this. So that's um, a second gotcha to just watch out for. Um, but otherwise, I've got my data returned. So the next bit is I can go on to the test screen here. So what I can do is I can choose um, ID or by ID. I'll choose my properties. And then I'll, um, I'll paste my uh, rail car ID in there. So you can see here's my query comes up. And I can send that, and you see I get my my results coming back here. Now, the interesting bit here is it's got this data in it, um, and then it's got by ID and items, but the schema I had to create was slightly different to that. And if I didn't, if I added the data in, it, um, it kind of, it, it would always get an error that it couldn't resolve to the schema properly. So I think uh, there's, there's maybe just a few bits of documentation you want to read up on about how the relationship between these two objects but really what i had in the schema maps fine and works and returns that data um so that i think that's pretty much everything i think the the only other thing i did was on my api um i got rid of the subscription key on the api m policy so if we we have a look at that um so here you can see there's a an API, a typical API policy, just getting rid of, rid of the subscription key, which you probably would want to do pretty standardly. Um, and I think the, the other thing that I tripped over as well was when I set it up on the settings. Um, at one point, I actually, when I first set it up, I put the Cosmos DB URL here. Um, and what I found was that when I was getting it working, I was always getting this authorization error. And I went through the trace, and what I found was happening was that the resolver kicks in, does the query, returns the data, but then APIM was following the rest of the policy, which indicated that it should make a, um, a back-end call to Cosmos. And I was getting an error thrown, sort of saying that you don't have the authorization header specified. And I was trying to work that out. I'm like, well, actually, I've queried the data. Why is it doing this? But what was happening was the resolver kicks in, queries the data, then it does a second call to Cosmos because I had this bit here populated. And, and I think when I, when I originally set it up, I'd set that up because um, I thought I needed it. But actually, because I'm using the resolver, that kind of steps in earlier in the pipeline. And I don't need this bit populated. So just as a as kind of a gotcha, just watch out for that. Other than that, that's um, everything for today's um, video. Hope you enjoyed um, checking out this video. Thanks for listening. Um,